Hi everyone, so this is the uh, second uh, video blog here on development of this uh, little skating game project I'm doing. I think where I left off, um, I'm not sure if I had these wristbands um, quite done. Um, and I'm not sure if the jeans, I had demoed the jeans, they're, they're not quite finished. Um, I had them in Mudbox and I got the, uh, as you can see, I got the normal map. Um, I'll sculpt it out for them. I'm going to hide her shirt a little bit. Yes, these are mom jeans, right? They go up really high on her on her waist. Um, it's kind of this cool style, I guess, now. I don't know. Um, so I had them in Mudbox, and I got, like, the normal map for the wrinkles and uh, the denim all sculpted out. Um, and I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. You know, in this game, you're never going to be right up on them. So there's, you know, there's some distortion in here and some imperfection that I'm willing to live with because at the closest you would see her maybe, let's put her shirt back on even though she has no uh, kind of things showing or anything, but um, the closest you'd be is probably like at this point right here on the screen where you could, uh, I'm anticipating sort of a, a character customizer where you can change her pants and her shirts and her shoes and her hair and basically every aspect of this character and kind of make her look um, you know like your ideal character that you would want to play as or like yourself if you're uh, you know a lady or whatever and so I got the denim on there and everything um, there's some stuff I haven't finished in the texture and the sculpt too where there's a couple of worn out torn spots here that look pretty cool and they're they're not reflecting in the map yet because I don't have them done in the uh, metallic or um, diffuse map, but I did start sculpting on the high res um, some tears and stuff like that to make them look nice. So I'm pretty happy with how that um, turned out. Um, I still need to go back into Substance Painter and kind of like I was doing on her face, paint the warm and cool zones on her skin and add a little bit of, you know, arm hair. Very light, not like crazy arm hair. Um, I think I did her a rough start on her the hair underneath her hair so if she didn't have long hair she's got this like bob of short hair um, work in progress right um, she still doesn't have any fingernails or anything like that so basically I have to go back to this entire skin and body mesh and give her toenails and fingernails and also bring that you know when I'm doing that in Mudbox sculpt the normals on it so we can kind of get some nice um, definition for a little bit of musculature here and there or wrinkles and folds and especially around the face that has no normals so you're lacking a lot of definition and folds in the face and stuff like that that you would normally see it looks really flat so that's where I left off on the art and then I started moving over into and I wasn't sure if this is actually going to be a featured part of this game but uh, you know one of the games I played as a kid in the early 90s was uh, Skater Die and Skater Die 2 and 720 and in Skater Die 2 there was this mode you could go into that was like a free play mode um, where you could go on a half pipe ramp like this and it had a little spine ramp in the middle here and you could just basically skate free and go balls to the wall trying to get tricks and points so I thought well I wonder if I could um, do something uh, like that my myself right and so I started prototyping maybe a half a day um, some kind of character that can skate on the ramp and it's very rough um, I, I barely don't want to call it um, functional you can see the physics and everything are a little wonky um, and he can move up and down he or she can move up and down the ramp um, no animation or anything just a stiff character one of the problems uh, I was having is this character basically gets aligned to the ramp by um, this little ray cast transform right here shooting down a ray and um, it actually should be up closer to the board that's a little odd um, let me see if I get a little better behavior now with that yeah, and so I wonder if I'm debugging. Yeah, okay, so I am debugging the ray. And you can see the little ray cast here going down. And it's uh, basically rotating our character to follow the normal of the surface normal of this curved ramp. So some awkward points we get here is this 90 degree 
point here where that uh, raycast hits this and it says I'm aligned to this and then it wants to be aligned to this and it's just like a kind of a real jolt even though I have this rotation speed here which basically determines how fast the character interpolates or smoothly goes between the rotations as it goes up and down the ramp um, it still doesn't know how to handle those those corners so I don't even know if I'm gonna put any more time into this for a game feature but I would like to it's just really difficult there's a lot of issues like on the ramps easy but when the character leaves the ramp like that uh, the behaviors are just very strange because of that transition and then because of the physics the character either flies off the ramp this way or oddly enough he flies back this way uh, just complete lack of real world weight and inertia so I really don't know if the physics route is going to be the way to go on this um, I was thinking to maybe do a spline technique here where the spline kind of goes up into the air about this far so the character can just basically ride on this spline okay and since the spline is normally static um, in this direction I figured what I could do is move the character this direction up and down the spline and then if I want the character to move up and down the ramp actually physically move the spline as well up and down the ramp within these limits so you get a local movement down the spline and then you get a world movement up and down like this I don't know if that'll work in theory in my head I said yeah this you know some crazy scientific experiment that I might live with um, so this is not the core gameplay um, it's just a prototype and something I would really like to get working but might need help on um, so the actual um, let me see where we're at okay so proxy scene here and I have this little dummy character here this player he's got a script here he or she and um, some enums in here for all the different tricks you can do it does already detect the swiping on the mouse so if you swipe up it does uh, like a heel flip you swipe down it does a hard flip you swipe uh, at an angle down to the right pop shove it and basically you have all these omnidirectional swipes and you can do all these different tricks and if you combine right and left mouse button I could add even other trick combos um, I had a game I launched called skate and crash and it was really one of my first like self-published games you know I finished myself uh, entirely and I did it in two weeks um, but it was a learning experience and so I went back in It was all written in JavaScript so I couldn't just directly use it but I pulled a lot of it over into my C sharp here uh, and reused some of it like basically like my spawning a ragdoll prefab um, stuff and so I have a game manager going that tells me the trick we're doing um, it is reading the distance but I don't have a UI label for it right now um, it's saying um, the distance to end the level basically how far the player has traveled I didn't want it to be endless I do want there to be very unique levels that do have an end gate and you get to them and the levels done so uh, it has a culling system that basically uh, removes these tiles what these are their world sections um, right now they're just flat boxes but you know each section like this one here um, let me see here like zone 5 can have all kind of unique trick boxes and all kind of stuff I could combine all kinds of things in here that the player could trick off of and do um, so you're not limited to just flat uh, there can also be gaps and holes like this there can be ramps like this um, what else okay and uh, basically we're using a technique where you it can go out pretty far without any floating uh, precision errors because the player never leaves the world origin and we just um, move the uh, let me see if I got the right axis we just move the world by the player like you can see what's going on there in the uh, thing and we're just moving these um, they're not static um, colliders but there's no rigid bodies on them the rigid body um, physics object actually lies only on our player right so I'm just moving these um, non-static colliders so if I hit play um, you'll see what happens here 
I hit left mouse button and I can ollie and oh and I pre and my ragdoll prefabbed out prefabbed instantiated there let me see if I made myself an impossible scenario uh, I think this one is just too darn tall so it's going to be very much like uh, making a puzzle so kick flip ollie heel flip front side flip Oh man, that's just barely made that one. Um, I don't know the tricks doing score multipliers or combos yet. Um, I'm trying to get past this part so I can just show you guys some other stuff. Oh, and I'm epically failing at my own game. I'm just going to move that closer. Now it's probably not even in the right zone, but I'm just kind of fiddling with it. Okay, so we got past that. So there is the player, and as you can see here, it's not leaving origin at all. The world is actually um, scrolling by the player. Um, this is our world mover. I can change the speed right there. I can change the acceleration, and if I do, uh, it's not set up right, yeah, if I do keyboard control, when I press the keyboard, the world will actually move based on the press on the keyboard, like that. And that kind of gives you the option in levels to, very much like Skate or Die 2, um, to move around the level and turn around and traverse the level that way, but we'll see if that's a different feature. Um, so the world's moving, and this right here is just simply, it's not destroying, it's just deactivating the tiles that are moving through the world. They're just being deactivated. And the green one, the spawner, is actually activating the tiles and drawing them and allowing them to come into our world so that basically we're just showing the world right around the player so we're efficient there this is just a visual guide to show me that that is the end of this level so I can look out on it and uh, um, as it's going I'll know so here's the distance traveled we're reading how far this moving world has moved past the player we're pretty close to that in level distance so you'll see the world stop and slow down here we go I have it lurping slowly so there we go comes to very slowly right comes to a stop pretty close and then that's the end of the level I don't have the animation stopping on the player and the player going into an idle yet as you can see I have no animation transitions for for the ollies or the tricks or anything like that so off to get that and basically what this did is this is the uh, this is a game over state or end of level um, state um, obviously the player scripts not uh, saying that it's game over um, and one thing I don't know if you could hear it or notice it but when the player is aware of game over it kills all of that rolling audio that the uh, the player is doing like uh, rolling over the concrete and there's different sounds based on the, the tags for metal or concrete so the skateboard wheels make a, a uh, trucks on metal sound for this and on the concrete pieces they make a rolling uh, rolling over concrete sound and that's just our player here with this raycast looking down and uh, checking what the uh, checking what the uh, tag of the object is underneath the player um, so that's about it for right now and um, hoping to keep moving forward and get back to art and maybe work on a more extensible level system uh, I'm not sure yet um, but things are moving forward and I'm pretty happy with development so until the next uh, blog I'll see you guys later